This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on creating cool effects in Motion 5. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create a project in Motion that can be used as a generator inside Final Cut Pro 10. So I click on Final Cut Generator. I'm going to make this a little longer, so I'll say 10 seconds. And we'll leave that all set the same. Click Open. Press F6 to hide this, press F5 to hide that, and Shift Z so we see our entire image. By the way, you see these safe zones here? You can turn them on or off by going to the View menu and turning on or off safe zones right there. If you ever want to see what your alpha channel looks like, go to this color box here, and you can look at the the color, that is to say the full screen image, or the alpha channel right down here. And if you ever need to change scale, go to the fit. Okay, I know what I want to do. I want to create a gradient that goes across the lower third that I could use for titles. So I go to my shape drawing tool right down here. Remember how we used that for a circle earlier? Now I'm going to use it for a rectangle, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. And there's my rectangle. Hmm click the arrow tool, I'll stretch this out so it fills the frame, pull this top down a little bit. It's still green. It's not a bad green. I mean, it's a pretty enough green, but I want it to be a gradient. Press the F7 key, because the HUD surely gives us the control that we need, and, well, I can feather it, you know, soften the edges. Hmm. No gradient. So, that's no good. Let's What's plan B? Plan B is you go up to the inspector. The HUD gives you all the common controls. The inspector gives you all the control you could possibly want. So watch this. We click on inspector. It knows the shape is selected. And so it gives us control over the shape first. Then it gives us three other tabs. Properties are the general properties. Think of these as, uh, as uh, size, scale, rotation, that sort of stuff. That's properties. If you have any behaviors applied to that clip, they'll show up here. If you have any filters applied to the clip, they'll show up there. I'm in shape, and I want to change the mode from color to gradient. And it gives us this nice, pretty blue color, except I want it to shade from light on this side to dark on that side. See this little thingus right there? That's our rotator control. You grab this outside dot and drag it, and you can rotate this as much as you want. By dragging it out, it just gives me a little bit more control as opposed to down in here where I got more control. If you hold the shift key down, you can rotate in 45 degree increments. Well, I want to rotate this so the shading goes from light to dark. Hmm, it's a little big. So I'll grab this corner, click hold and drag, pull it down a bit, give myself some room to work, put that at the bottom of the frame, grab a corner, drag it back, put this at a corner of the frame, drag it so it... All right, so now I've got this nice, I've got some feathering in here that we can turn off, F7. And let's just set the feathering. By the way, see these sliders right here? You could grab the slider and drag it, but if you hold the Option key down, and click on the slider itself, not on the knob but in the track. Option clicking moves in single increments. So if you need to be really, really precise, hold the Option key down, and, and now we took the feather out. Okay, so now we've got the gradient set, except I, I, uh, I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be, I want it to be, let's make it gold. All right, so we twirl down this, and we see a different kind of color picker, one that we haven't seen very much before. This is the starting color. This is the ending color. Right mouse click, and now it opens up the real-time color picker, and you can shade that to whatever color you want. I'm going to shade it to like a brown, right about there, a darker brown. Good. So we've got that. Now what's this white bar? the white bar controls opacity. If I click here and click here, I've added three opacity control points. As it shades from beginning to end, it's going to be fully opaque, white, fully opaque, white, and I right mouse click on here and go down to this. White means opaque, gray means translucent, black means transparent. I'm going to click right there, and it's going to shade to translucent 
and ultimately to transparent as it goes from light to dark. So we'll just click this color chip here, set this to a lighter brown, right around in there. And now I've got this nice background that shades from whatever color I want to another color that I want and shades from opaque to transparent. It's perfect. I just need to get it to Final Cut. How do I do that? Go up to the File menu, go down to Save. Motion already knows that this is going to be saved such that Final Cut can find it. So I'm going to call this Gold, Lower, Third, and I'm going to save it in a category that I created. I created a new category and called it Webinars. I don't have a theme, so I'll leave that set to None, and I'll publish it. Done. Now I switch to Final Cut. I've got this shot of the trains running over the bridge, right about there. And I go to the Generator Browser, and I click on the Webinars category, and there's our gold lower third. Click, hold, and drag. And look at it right there. It's perfect. I could now add text to it. I could, if I wanted to, make this whole thing translucent. You can see how it fades to translucent here. And if you need to change it, just right mouse click on it and say Open in Motion. This will open the file in motion, and you can make changes. And as soon as you save them, they're reflected in this generator's browser. But it will not change any generators that have been applied to clip. Once you've applied it, once you've dragged it from the browser out of any of these browsers, and you drag it to the timeline, it's locked. You'd have to delete it and re-add it if you wanted to make changes. But these, all you have to do is say Open in Motion as soon as you save the file in Motion. It'll be updated in the browser, but not in the timeline. Now clearly we could make this any color, we could make it any amount of translucent, we could have it go on the side. We've got complete creative control. What's cool is as soon as I create it and save it in motion, it shows up inside Final Cut. If you're looking for ways to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library can save you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. This means you've got access to more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth, all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit larryjordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering cool effects inside Motion 5. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 94. Thanks.